Let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, uh, let's try this again. Let's, let's try this one more time. Let's give the Lord a praise because he's worthy of it. How about that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give me a little bit of... Uh, Volume over here, if you can. Hey, man, uh, I thank God just for the. I tell you what, let's give a round of applause for the praise team. Come on, let's give a round of applause. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, man, I thank God for the praise team uh, being diligent. You know, the praise team, um, they're often here Saturdays. Let's get that air up. It's hot at you, Jesus, once again. And uh, they're often here uh, weekly on the weekends. If they're here on Sunday, a lot of you guys don't get here until around 12. These folks are here uh, as early as about 10, 10.30, uh, 10, 15, uh, practically every week. And uh, none of those folks are being paid. Amen? None of those positions are paid. So they serve as unto the Lord. And so I thank God for them. We appreciate them. How do you feel about being back out in the house of the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, glory be to God. Are you still saved? Yes. You sure? You didn't Hallelujah. backslide over the week, did you? 
Amen. You still is God still good? Absolutely. Does the blessing still work? Absolutely. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise, then. You better act like this. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to begin to worship the Lord concerning our tithe and our offering. Before we do, I want you to go ahead and have a seat. I need to address something. And are we live? We're live, right? I need to address something. So you got what you need here? We're good? I need to address something. Don't want to spend a lot of time concerning this. Um, don't particularly prefer to uh, discuss this after service in detail. At least not today anyways, you know. <laughs> Today you're going to have to be like Moses and let God's people go. God's people is me. Let me go. Okay, I got to go. I, am, uh, I do have to leave out fairly quickly right after service today. Um, let me say this. Um, we are in uh, a time in the body of Christ. This is relevant to our giving. I want to clear this up before we sow. We are in a particular time to where the enemy is um, doing everything he can to sort of prolong his time, his judgment. He's already been judged. He is doomed to uh, forever in the lake of fire, right? He's doomed. There's nothing he can do to stop that. It's inevitable. Um, but he has, and it's within his grasp, uh, theoretically, um, he has been able to delay it, okay? He has been able to delay his judgment. Uh, I believe personally that the rapture uh, maybe would have come uh, a lot sooner uh, had uh, the body of Christ, had we been able to exercise the authority that the Lord has given us and come together in unity. But one of the ways the enemy uh, disrupts the body of Christ is through division. Okay? And uh, particularly um, in the body of Christ and even amongst uh, faith circles, uh, the enemy will uh, uh, sow seeds that will cause discord and cause things to be taught and, and uh, waves to be followed and in the uh, body of Christ that are contrary uh, to the Lord, that are contrary to um, what the Bible actually teaches. And unfortunately, it's easy for the believers, I mean me, I mean you, it's easy for us to fall into it and start following those things uh, because the Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of destruction. Am I, am I quoting that right? Somebody help me quote that. Now, um, saints... The benefit of having a home church is one of the benefits is so that you can recognize the difference between a truth and a lie. So you can recognize the difference between what God did say and what he did not say. Now, the church keeps you sensitive to the voice of God, keeps you close to the word of God. So you're not having to take a man's word for it. You are able to check for yourself. None of us, no preacher, no pastor, none of us have the right to put our own interpretation on the word. Whatever the word says is final authority, and none of us have the right to change it, period no matter what. You are not robots. You are not <laughs> zombies. You are not without the ability to think, right? 
the final word of authority is what that Bible actually says. So whenever anything is said or preached that contradicts that word, now, don't get me wrong, a lot of believers assume that they know what this scripture and that scripture means, and, and oftentimes we don't know. But when you stay around the word, stay in church, stay in prayer, then you're able to recognize the voice of the Lord, and you can recognize when, uh, um, when it's not there. Now, I say all of that to say this. There is a teaching going around starting in the body of Christ. I'm not responsible for any other church. I'm responsible for anointed Word of Faith Church here on Lake Club Drive. Right? There's a teaching going around in the body of Christ. <coughs> and I have to honestly say that it's gaining traction. That... The subject matter is concerning grace, okay? Sometimes you may hear it referred to as grace-based theology. One of the subjects that they're highlighting right now is between tithing and grace. And the premise of it says that because we've gotten born again and we're no longer under the law, that tithing is no longer relevant, is lo no longer necessary, that you just give, you know, if you got it, give, if you can't, don't, but this tithing thing is old school, old testament uh, situation, and folks, it's not accurate, that's not right. Now, look, do I need, can I give a disclaimer, a disclosure here? Are you ready for this? Your tithes don't pay my bills. At least not yet. At some point they will. Glory to God. At some point they will. At least a portion of it. And um, so this is not about your tithes. Um, I've preached to you from day one the truth. And I've never backed down from it. And I'm telling you, as it relates to this tithe versus grace theology, the premise behind it is that the law, since we're no longer, longer under the law, one of the scriptures that's being used concerning this is Romans 6.14. And I know maybe some of you never thought that the class of Romans 6.14 was relevant to your situation. But... Had you come to that class or heard that teaching, you'd understand what Romans 6.14 actually means, what it's talking about. And when it says that, we are, that sin shall have no dominion over you because we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace, that doesn't mean everything under the law is supposed to be thrown out. There are some things under the law that are still in place, glory be to God. Right, absolutely. It was wrong to murder before the law. <laughs> right. Now, before the law came in, sin had not yet been identified. Sin was always sin, but the identification of sin before the law or before the Ten Commandments time was the breaking of spiritual law. And any time spiritual law or God's laws, which are evident throughout the universe and has always been since Adam in the garden, any time those laws were broken, there was always a consequence. Well, when the Jews came along, the Lord or God created the Ten Commandments to identify what was actually the breaking of spiritual law to help them understand that all of these areas are hot points that will open up satanic doors in the lives of any established group. Also in the lives of any individual. 
So those Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, those are satanic doors. Now those are still relevant under grace. I don't believe the preachers would argue with you and say that coveting is okay now that you're under grace, that you can take somebody else's wife, or that it's okay to kill. No, it's not. So the part of the law that we are not under is the part of the law that causes you to fail. That's rule keeping without the heart of God. So under grace, when we tithe, we tithe not just out of obligation or necessity, but out of privilege. Jerry Savell said it like this, my tithe is not a debt that I owe, it is the seed that I sow. And how do we do it? We do it willingly, glory be to God. God loves a what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. Now that tithe is holy. And the implication or the accusation against those of us in the body of Christ that still believe in tithes or teaching tithes is that it is, it is a fear-based theology that we're scaring people into the tithe. Well, let me help you with that this day in this church. You do what you want to do with your tithe. See how it turns out. <laughs> now, let me say that in a different way. The tithe is holy. And it belongs to the Lord. The tithe was instituted before the law. It was before the Ten Commandments. Some of them will try to fight that. But it was before the Ten Commandments, during the Ten Commandments, and in grace. It's still there. Did you get that? Well, glory be to God. Let's give the Lord a praise for that. Now, I won't spend much time on that here today because in some churches right now, they're having to spend a, a considerable amount of time re-preaching that. But where we're so blessed is this church is uh, primarily a faith church. You guys don't have a lot of religion in you, so I don't have to take a lot of it out of you. Glory be to God. Have mercy. So we're just gonna we're just gonna move right on, but be aware of that. You need to before you change positions on anything, you need to know that you've heard from God. It needs to be proven and backed up in the Word, not just by what somebody else says, but what you have seen in the Word. Does that make sense? Amen. The Bible says whatever is not of faith uh, sin. is sin. What is faith? An assurance, where do you get the assurance from? Hearing what God said. From hearing the word. So whatever you are changing or doing when you haven't gotten an assurance in your heart from the word from is sin. It's missing the mark. Does that make sense? All right, I believe I've said all that I'm going to need to say about that, at least for right now. We'll uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this a little later if necessary. All right, let's uh, stand. Now we can stand. And uh, initially when this came out, um, now let me just say this. This thing is being rolled out on a massive level in the body of Christ right now. Anybody heard it? No, actually not. What do y'all do, do, do through the week? What do, what do you do? Do you, go to, do you listen to the word? go to church? You, I love it. The Lord just got you in a bubble. Glory be to God. Just stay on in the bubble. Don't come out of it. Stay on in it. It's a good bubble. Glory be to God. Have mercy. It is being rolled out massively in the body of Christ. At some point, you'll run into it. I'm telling you now. Stick with the word. Does that make sense? There's safety in the local church. Did you know that? Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for the local church. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Right. You know, while we, before we go to this, I want to say this. Listen, those of you that have recently gotten born again and say, 
Listen, I want you to know that the Lord loves you. And the Lord is protecting and comforting you in a way that will become foundational for the rest of your saved life. And I know it's not easy because the enemy tries to kill things in its infancy. When you first get born again, sometimes, especially in these days, it's like a war is on. Because he wants you to conclude that it was all a figment of your imagination, that you made it up, that it was not real, that you got caught up in a cult, all kind of stuff. The devil is a lie. Yeah. Glory be to God. I can't speak for anybody else, but that word has yes. and is yes. working for me. That's right. God. Me too. See, I'm ruined in this regard. It, you know... The, He's got to try something else. He can't convince me that it's not real because I've lived this. I know what it is to be the opposite. This thing is working for me. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So those of you that have just gotten born again, listen, desire the sincere milk of the word. Stay close. Don't isolate. Stay in fellowship. You get away from fellowship, you get away from the church, the enemy will sow all kind of devilish ideas in your thinking. Does that make sense? Don't neglect prayer. Don't neglect it. You need it every day still. Did you know that? How often? Every day. You need it. Glory be to God. All right, I'll move on. Could, some, is, could somebody get some water uh, up here, please? Uh, That'd be great. No, not you, sir. Not you. That's an excuse. You can get out of service. I know what you're trying to do. I did that when I was your age. Um, let's uh, get ready to worship the Lord concerning our giving. First of all, give yourselves a hand, those of you that are out in person at Anointed Word of Faith Church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for you. Thank God for your faithfulness and your commitment to the house of the Lord. Uh, also, thank God for those of you that are joining us online. Let's give a hand to those joining us online, wherever they may be. Hallelujah. Come on. Can, just Lord. one, just two claps. Hallelujah. Well, glory be to thank God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, folks online, they may be happy that you're here. I don't know. <laughs> thank you, Lord. We thank God for you, and um, we appreciate your support, and pray that the word is working for you. And uh, if you are online and you don't have a church home, we encourage you to get to one somewhere. Get to a church home. Amen? Amen. All right, let's prepare to worship the Lord concerning our giving, and we will move and uh, get right into the word. Amen? If you have a point of contact, something that you can release your faith on, something that through the eyes of faith you can see a transaction happening in the realm of the spirit. I'd invite you to do it now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you've translated us out of darkness over into the kingdom of light, where we prosper and we increase continually because you love us. And uh, we are your very own children, and we thank you for that, for bringing us and adopting us into your family. Now, Jesus, we come before you as our high priest, and we praise you and give you honor, sir. We acknowledge you as our Savior, our Redeemer, and we appreciate your high priestly duties. That you offer up sacrifice concerning the words of our mouth. So we say and decree before you right now, that God is a good God and we bring our tithe and our offering and our seed before you willingly, not out of obligation. We decree we have not been manipulated, but we willingly give as an expression of gratitude and thanks Hallelujah. because you've been so good, you are so good, and you will continue to be good and we believe that. Yes. Take it to the Father. Our heart is in it. The heart of the New Testament, the fulfillment of everything we do, is in love and obedience to your word. Worship him on our behalf. 
dance before him, make his heart glad. Now, as a result, we believe we receive the windows of heaven open to us and the blessing being poured out in overflow. We claim tithers' rights and the devourer, we believe, is rebuked for our sake as we've given. It's being given unto us. Now, repeat this after me. It's being given to me. It's being given to me with good measure. With good measure. Pressed down. Pressed down. Shaken together. Shaken together. And running over. And running over. Men. Men. Corporations. Corporations. Organizations. organizations and, the and the enemy. Are giving. Are giving into my bosom. Into into my welfare, into my, welfare, into my, business, into my business, into my establishments, into my, establishment, my, family, my family, overflow, overflow my, needs my needs are met, are met and, are and are being transferred right now, right now from, the enemy's camp. from the enemy's camp. Come on, give the Lord a Hallelujah. praise if you believe it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I tell you what, it's at this part that you'll hear people getting loud. You know what's it, what that means when they're getting loud in church? You know what that means? They're believing for something. Glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. You better get you some. Yeah. You better get you some. You haven't gotten complacent yet, have you? <laughs> Are all your needs met? Are you shooting? Are they already met? Are you good? You don't need anything else? Well, if that's the case, you need to be believing for somebody else's Amen. needs to be met. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are online, you may have your seats and you'd like to partake of this offering. Please go to awofc.org and you will find options uh, to do so. Now, um, real briefly before we jump into this. And uh, don't want to wear your patience long, so I'm going to uh, adhere to this clock. I'm going to try to turn up this alarm so when it goes off, glory be to God. All you got to do is tell uh, Brother Church, don't tell me to keep going. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Have mercy. <laughs> You're going to be in trouble off that one now. Um, now, let me say this. Um, real briefly, um, there will be no Bible study tomorrow, by the way. Um, we are going to observe uh, the holiday of independence. Uh, we value it. We think it's important here. So um, we encourage you to spend time with your families and your loved ones and um, uh, celebrate the independence we have in this absolutely amazing, great country that we live in. Let's give the Lord a praise for that. And listen, if you don't understand that we live in an amazing country, you just don't know anything about what's going on. You know, uh, from a demographic position, they would say if uh, the average pastor or a person in a pulpit stands up and makes a statement like that, the rebuttal is, well, you know, you don't know what people have gone through in this country, I can tell you as an African-American man that I would be in the category of the stereotypical individual who shouldn't celebrate the country. And I'm telling you that that is absolutely ridiculous. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're hearing that from a man that grew up in the projects. I've been chased by police many, many, many times. <laughs> And my conclusion is that I live in the best country in existence. Thank you, Lord. Do you hear that? Love it. Thank you, Lord. I live in the best country in existence, and ain't no use to trying to talk me out of it because it ain't going to work. <laughs> now, I nor you should identify by your race. You identify as a kingdom citizen. Amen. See, I never let them put, they can never put me in the black category because I'm not black. Right. I'm kingdom. I'm an alien. Do you understand that? They shouldn't be able to put you in the white category or any other color or the yellow or the brown, whatever, because you are from the kingdom. 
Racism has no place in God. Amen. You understand that? None whatsoever. It is absolutely demonic and ridiculous, whatever side you're on. Amen. Now, I will say, and uh, man, so much to say sometimes because the established church nowadays has so many parameters on you when the, you can't get things out when you need to get them out but since I'm never with the protocol <laughs> let me say that I will let me clarify that statement because you know there are, I I get put in the category get accused even by black people that says you know he's uh, you know I, it, maybe he's you know in denial and he has disowned his race and all of that kind of stuff you couldn't begin to know me and actually say that to me in person glory be to God uh, to not know that but I will say this to, to come to that conclusion I will say this that uh, as an African American in this country the Bible says that the battle that a person faces in this earth is not natural for we wrestle not against flesh and blood that means natural but against what principalities, principalities and what powers. and powers and what rulers. rulers that are not what they're not from this world they're spiritual beings so whenever you see a people oppressed like the black race or the Jewish race, it's not been done naturally, it's been done supernaturally. Yeah. Satan is behind it. Where we're getting off at is you're blaming people instead of blaming Satan. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're hating the wrong, the wrong person here. And now, it doesn't make light of what has happened to you, particularly you African Americans or minorities if you will who whatever category you're in it just says that the moment you got redeemed and born again you were elevated to a different category no matter what place you were in you are no longer at a disadvantage because you are black do you understand that now you have the advantage glory be to God so don't go around telling this, 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 singing this sad song that, oh, you know, they don't want a black man to have this. You got to get more connected to the kingdom and stop thinking that way. As long as you talk like that, you will draw that kind of spiritual attack against you. Speak life. I am the righteousness of God. I am the body of Jesus. You know, I love how Bill Winston, who actually pastors to a 95% African-American church or ministers to that kind of different demographic of over 20,000 people. And uh, he said that when he first bought the shopping center where the church is in Chicago, they said, you know, if I'm understanding this right, that property used to be um, a a uh, property where um, there was a lot of racism even associated with that property. And uh, that when he first tried to buy it, the consensus was, we'll never let a black man own that property. And uh, he was asked, that was said to him by other black people. And his response to that was this, who do you think you're talking to? Do you not know that I'm a kingdom man? Right. Right. I'm not a black man, I'm a kingdom man. You know what ended up happening, don't you? You know the rest of the story, don't you? He got that property, glory be to God. How did he get it? He got it by faith in God. Faith in God and faith in his word changes everything. I tell you, I don't know what it is to see myself at a, at a disadvantage because I'm black. I don't know what that even feels like. It never even occurs to me in any way. You shouldn't either. Do you understand that? And on the other side, if you're a different race, if you're white, whatever the case is, 
You don't see yourself as guilty for what other people have done. Glory be to God. I don't care if you were a part of it at one time. Now that you're in Christ, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. Do you get that? No victims in the kingdom. There are no victims in the kingdom. There are no victims and there are no predators in the kingdom. Does that make sense? Well, I'm glad I got that off my chest. Have mercy. Yes, it's time to move and preach the word. Have mercy. Now, uh, why don't you uh, turn over with me really briefly to uh, Luke. Turn to Luke. I'm excited about this word, man. I got to get this out. Lord have mercy, Thank Jesus. You, Luke chapter 10, all over the place this morning. My goodness. It's still hot in here, Jesus. Let's get some help with that air. Luke chapter 10. I'll say that again. Those of you that have just gotten born again, you have support. I don't know why the Lord would have me say that again as I'm trying to move on in my message here. But if you've just recently been born again, those of you online here in this church, you have support. You are not alone. Glory be to God. Do you hear it? Yes. Don't let the devil tell you that. Yes. You hold on. Glory be to God. Help is not on the way. It's already here. <laughs> it's already here. Do you get that? Yes. It may be for somebody. All right. We've been in a series. Um, the name of the primary series we've been in is entitled... Taking possession. At the beginning of this year, the Lord told us that this is the year of possession. And his emphasis was that, hey, there are things that I've made available that I need the people of God or my people to go and take advantage of. And it seems like as this series has unfolded through the year that he's been showing us the areas where things have been left on the table and what adjustments to make to take advantage of those things. Why? Because overall, his desire is to do good to us, to bless you, to make you a success, and me, beyond anything you can imagine, and he needs to use you to be a blessing in the earth. Jesus has an assignment by God. He's, he's been given a job, and he's been given responsibilities by the Father, and he needs to get those uh, task accomplished and the way he does it is through his body he does it through us so he wants us to come up so that we can get the job done well coming up includes you being able to receive everything the Lord has for you okay you being able to walk in the blessing so that you are viable that you are fully equipped to be able to meet the needs and accomplish the task that you've been assigned. And everybody's been assigned to different areas. Everybody's assigned area is not the same. The preacher, the preacher is not the only viable assignment in the body of Christ. The praise team or the worshiper or the singer or the musician is not the only viable assignment in the body of Christ. There are millions and millions. You've got to identify what yours is. And it has to be uncovered. You don't get born again and just kind of automatically know. All right? There's times where people uh, have, uh, there's been the exception, but the norm is it has to be uncovered. You walk it out and you just keep getting more and more light. Does that make sense? Now, um, more recently, we've been talking about getting in alignment with what the Lord has already made available. And that if we focus on the spiritual side of being in alignment, then we are not exhausted by chasing the things or the provision. So it causes us to live a little differently. We're living now from the inside out. So we're getting our needs met by living from the perspective of the spirit realm and not the natural. For example, if I were trying to get uh, a car or a house, 
I'm just using that as an example. Certainly not limited to this. You put whatever needs to be in there. A successful marriage. Okay? Healed in my body. Then what we're talking about is showing us that the result for that thing is in the realm of the spirit. And how to learn the laws of the spirit realm or the kingdom of God and then execute those laws and then the benefits show up in your natural life. Does that make sense? That's what we've been talking about, right? Now, more recently, here in Luke, we've been looking at a person who has fallen into trying to get their natural needs met, or watch this, accomplish a number of things in the natural while being out of alignment with God. Now, the example that we're looking at here in Luke is not a person that's not born again. This is not a person that does not love God. As a matter of fact, it's the total opposite. We see a person that loves God who is a disciple, glory be to God, a follower of the Lord who is out of alignment spiritually. And then there's a key as to why this person got out of alignment spiritually. And from my personal life, it's something that in my life is the biggest responsibility and that I have to watch the most. I would say that it is the secret to every good and successful thing that has happened in my life on purpose since I've been living by faith in the kingdom. Does that make sense? Amen. Now, Luke chapter 10 and I'm just going to read this again. Verse 38 is where we're going to cover this again. I'm just going to go through this really quick and remind you sort of the context of what we're talking about. And then we're going to move over to Matthew. Uh, Brother Victor, that next chapter will be Matthew chapter 12, by the way. Now, in Luke chapter 10, verse 38, let me read this King James Version. If you have it, say I have it. If you're looking, say, I'm looking. Well, they have it, glory to God. Now, watch this. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to speak the word of life. A word, Lord, that I myself intend to and have, and have chosen to be first partaker of here today. Speak a word that's clear, that's easy for the people to understand and receive. And Lord, open up the eyes of the understanding of the ones that hear and receive this, showing them what to do. Lord, I'm asking that the anointing fall in here and this word be confirmed with signs, wonders, and miracles putting the super on our natural. And I believe I receive that now. Lord, I'm asking for boldness to declare your word unapologetically. Now, Satan, I break your power and cancel your assignment. We decree and agree in this place that the word will go forward unhindered by you. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, shout amen. amen. Glory be to God. Well, Verse 39 says this, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Now, Martha and Mary, please understand, were sisters. These two sisters have a brother. Anybody know who their brother is? Lazarus, Lazarus is their brother. Now, Lazarus was considered a friend of God, right, of Jesus, rather. Him, he and Jesus were extremely close. Lazarus was also a disciple. Okay? Now, the disciples, you understand, were more than 12. Those 12 became apostles, but at one time, the number of disciples actually mentioned in the Gospels was 70, most recently in this particular text. Now, even after those 12 were sort of notable or, be, or were chose, became notable and chosen, 
there were still people outside of the 12 that were considered disciples that sold into Jesus' ministry, that supported him, that followed him, and that received what he taught. Now, Mary and Martha are in that group. So it was common in this particular case when Jesus is traveling through this area, it made sense for him to go to Martha's house because she was a disciple. She was part of the crew, glory be to God. She was, on, she was in the inside circle. Does that make sense? Now, in this particular case, verse 38 or verse 39 points out that when Jesus came there, he would hold meetings in houses of people. Now, you got to understand when the New Testament talks about the house of a person, it's not like your house typically of, you know, 1,500 or 2,000 square feet. House would be the equivalent of like a compound, an estate even, massive at times. So big in a lot of cases that it was conducive to actually hold a meeting there. Now, these weren't just your average little baby meetings. These were meetings that would later change the face of the entire world, change the government. These were big deals. And out of all the places that Jesus could have chosen to go to to teach things that would redefine the world, he chose her place to go to. Does that make sense? Now, he goes there. And disciples are there. Mary is one of them. Martha is one of them. And while this meeting is being conducted, Martha takes on the position of serving in this meeting. In other words, this would be the equivalent of the church service. A huge meeting, a revival service even, or, you know, Somebody's come to town and the word is being preached and taught. Well, Martha, not saying this is altogether wrong. Please don't misunderstand me. Understand me. Martha was overseeing the work aspect of this meeting. You know, she was managing the kitchen staff. She was managing uh, the helps ministry, essentially, associated with this meeting. And with all of her efforts and all the things she was trying to manage and get done for Jesus, she ran into uh, two things, frustration and a lack of results. Frustration and a lack of results. Now, Martha gets so frustrated that at some point she says to Jesus, Hey, make Mary help me. She's frustrated. Now, in verse 40, I want to point out the condition of Martha, and I'm going to jump around and cover some things. Verse 40, but Martha was cumbered. I want you to say this after me. Martha was cumbered. What does that mean? What does cumbered mean? Now let's talk about the definitions associated with that. Here the definition is manifold. There are multiple different areas that describe the condition she was in. It, one of them was she was drawn away. She was distracted. She was driven about mentally. She was overoccupied. She was too busy and full of care. She was worried and working a lot. Now, watch this. These issues didn't start at that meeting. These issues developed before that meeting ever started. What issues? She was drawn away. She was drawn away before this meeting. 
mentally distracted or mentally driven or not focused. She was distracted. She was, watch this, before the meeting. Watch this. Too busy. You, you know, before the church service. Have you ever been there? I'm too busy to pray. Hit you with a curveball right there. Thought I was going to say church. <laughs> too busy to go to church. Right? Now, she was full of care, meaning she was also anxious and worried. What she, what's happening at this meeting where she is serving is just a byproduct of a condition she already was in. She was already in this place. Now, back up to verse 38 or verse 39, and let me read this verse again. And she, being Mary, or Martha, had a sister called who? Mary. Mary. Now, what about Mary? Which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Now, this meeting is starting out of all the things that need to be done for this meeting to be successful, one is already in a place of razzle-dazzleness. Can we just call it that? And the other one, what is it about this person that with all the things needing to be done, automatically gravitated to the word and hearing the word? Now, Here's something interesting. The word, word, in this particular text is a Greek word translated, the word translated word is a Greek word called logos. Now, Mary is at the feet of Jesus to hear logos. Now, logos means, there's a couple different implications, but in this case, it is a word that is verbally taught. It is a word of instruction. In the Bible, particularly in the New Testament, when you see the word W-O-R-D, it's translated either logos or rhema. Uh -huh. Are you still with me or have you gone home? Still here. You still here? I'm, I'm not putting you to sleep yet. The kids are still with me. I know you can hang Whoa. if the kids can hang. Now, logos is a word of instruction. Jesus was there giving a word of instruction concerning what? What was he giving a word of instruction about? The kingdom. Jesus always and only preached and taught concerning the kingdom. Absolutely. Now go back to this verse. Seek ye first what? Kingdom. The kingdom of God and its what? Right. And his righteousness or right way of doing things and then what? All these things are added to you. The needs are met. So Mark, Mary came to the conclusion like, hey, the answer to all the direction I'm going to need in life, what's going to show me what to do, is not going to come from my working or my busyness or my pursuit. It starts with hearing the instruction from heaven. Understanding how the kingdom of God works. Does that make sense? Now, Mary decided to attend to how the kingdom works. Now, can I point out to you, when you have chosen a lifestyle of attending to the word or making the word of God first priority and final authority, 
there is going to come miscommunication or misunderstanding and accusations concerning you having taken that position. That accusation can come spiritually and naturally. Nowadays, primarily spiritually. The enemy's telling you that you're crazy for spending this time in the word. Family, friends say that you're a, you're a, you're a, uh, you know, a whack job. <laughs> okay, I got to get expressive here because you are living this lifestyle of in the Bible all the time. You're a freak. You're a weirdo because you are spending time coming to church. You have prioritized church where guess what the logos is coming out the verbal word of authority and instruction and you've got to know that those are lies you've got to know that that those are lies as a matter of fact what Jesus said about Mary having chose this and we'll see this a little later in the text. Go down to verse, actually, let's just look at it now. Verse 10. Verse 42, I'm sorry, chapter 10, verse 42. Jesus says, but one thing is needful, telling this to Martha. And Mary hath chosen... That good part. That's good. That's good. Do you see that? Yeah. There's one thing that is of necessity, that word says in the Greek, that is of the absolute most importance. And Mary, watch this, chose it. She made a decision concerning this. She didn't emotionally end up at this place watch this she didn't grow to this place she made a decision to get in this place every successful endeavor in life and in any given area starts with a quality decision You'll have to establish right now, as it relates to living by faith, have you figured it out yet? The word of faith. The word doesn't work unless faith doesn't work without the word. And the word doesn't work unless you get an assurance of it. Does that make sense? Now, this ministry, when this ministry started, um, Sister Chelsea and I, you've heard me say this, it, we were so impressed about the necessity of the position the word needed to play. In our case, it may have been a little different because it almost seemed like, partic particularly in my case, that we were able to sit down and actually count up the cost and make an informed decision that said, in order for us to be successful in this way of living, we're going to have to conclude, reconcile, and make a decision right now at the beginning that the word has to be first place in our lives. That it would be more important than anything. That if there was anything that would take us away from the word, we would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was not God. And that we could not hope to expect supernatural results by the neglecting of the word. 
To this day, whenever we have gotten off, it has always been because we got away from the word in a particular area. So it's trained us to look inside instead of outside. If something is going wrong, what we're looking and searching for is what does the word say? That may sound a little intimidating. What we're making an assessment of is have we not been spending sufficient time in the word? Does that make a little bit more sense? Absolutely. Now, let me read the rest of that verse and then jump back up here. But one thing is needful, necessary, extremely important, needs to be top priority, and Mary chose it. And what she chose, guess what, folks? is the good part. It's good. Don't let the enemy tell you, you know, we had some pastors right after when we made this decision. We were sort of in the cave a little bit, came out after, you know, several months. And we had, uh, let, me, let me be more plain here. So if, if you're ever wondering how the, this lifestyle actually worked, is our daily routine in living revolved around the word of God. So in the morning, in the morning times, prayer and turning on that word and attending to it in the house while we're getting ready. We're in the car. The word is playing. We're, we turned off music to attend to the word. Okay? And during the day, any staying away from anything that would compromise the word. We weren't watching TV. I'm not saying it's wrong to watch TV. We do watch TV now. But in the beginning, we weren't watching TV. If we watched movies, it was things that produced, that increased our faith. Um, we were so anxious for the next church service. I mean, like on the count, almost felt like we were counting down the hours to the next church service, wherever it was. Because at that time we didn't all the way have a church yet. <laughs> and at night when we went to bed, the word is playing Brother Hagen preaching the word of faith to us. Still is to this day. Amen. All these years, still, we go to bed with the word. Have there ever been times where we didn't go to bed with the word? Yes. But 90% of the time, that word is on. Now, we came out of this cave and we were with some pastors, some older pastors. And uh, they were asking us, you know, hey, what do you do in life? How, what's, your, you know, what are you, what's your life like? And it's amazing how many people, Christians, have concluded that they can have a good, happy life without God being the center of it. But in our thinking, we couldn't fathom that. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't see that. And so when they found out what our life was like, they were like, well, how do you have any, and like, wow, you're at such a disadvantage. I feel bad for you. We looked at them like, are you crazy? We are having the time of our lives right now. We were building. Now, those same people years later came back and looked at the results and said, oh, basically, I'm paraphrasing. Their reaction is, oh, my God, how did this happen? How did you get here? That those habits produced multi-million dollar operational businesses. It produced a marriage where, you know, husband and wife actually love each other and enjoy each other and are on the same page. Where, you know, wife isn't having to monitor husband. Husband isn't having to monitor wife. Two people love God. You, you know, she, if I'm not at church, she's going to church. She's not at church. 
I'm going, you, you know, everything was changing rapidly and growing. I mean, freedom in every area, and the word was the reason for it. And we're with Christians, leaders, that the very thought of committing to the word that way was completely foreign to them. Are you with me? All right, that clock was only about 29 minutes, so bear with me. Are you still here or have you gone home? Are you getting anything out of this so far or are we going through the motions here? Do I got at least one that's, I got one, I got maybe, I got, I got a few, glory be to God. Online, me and you, okay? Now, look what Jesus said. And Mary have chosen that good part, which what? Which shall not be taken away from her. What she has chosen is not only valuable or good, it cannot be stolen. And I thought about this, or taken away, I, or in the Greek it means cut off. I said, Lord, it, it can't be that the word can't be stolen. Because you said concerning the kingdom, you said that within, when any man heareth a word of the kingdom, that the enemy comes in and immediately tries to steal it out of his heart. So if you're saying right here, Lord, that the word cannot be taken away, then there's something else we're missing here. <laughs> Here's what couldn't be taken away. The decision to make the word first place. Isn't that good? That is something that is within your ability. Did you get that? Let me, let me say it again. Let me say it again. It's millennial wow. Church, I'm going to need help. I'm going to need help. Aubrey, come up here for a second. Come up here, uh, Mason. I'm going to need help. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Now, he just told Mary, Mary, He's telling Martha that, Mary, you've missed it. What did Martha miss? The decision. She didn't miss the word. She missed the decision. What the enemy will tell you is based off of how you feel that you don't have the capacity or the ability to make a decision. Jesus says right here, that is the one thing that can not be taken away from you. Jesus gave his blood to protect and preserve your ability to make a decision. Now watch this. Procrastination, watch this. I haven't made a decision in that particular area. Do you, do you see that? Isn't that interesting? I mean, that just, I mean, that is good. I, I mean maybe that's just me. That is good. But the enemy will tell you the opposite through your feelings. Uh, you know, I just can't seem to, I can't uh, seem to commit to this or do that I just don't really ever feel like it and there's all kind of self help not saying anything's wrong with a lot of the self help stuff I'm not saying anything's wrong with it but there are all kind of outside remedies that are presented as though they are the cure for indecision the best they can do is get you to a place where you actually decide and make a decision. But the decision is on you. You are a spirit and you have a what? A soul. And in your soul is your mind. You do have the ability to think, right? There's no argument about that. And you have a what? Will. That is within your grasp. You and I have the ability to decide. In this particular case, Martha here, or Mary, 
did something good, she made a decision to do what? Attend to the word, assuming that I can't possibly be successful if I don't know these laws. If I don't know how this system works, I can't be successful. Can you see how we've done it, friend? Absolutely. The opposite? Absolutely. Can you see how we've tried to fix our employment situations, right. our marriages and relationships, yeah. our interaction with our children? You see, we've tried to fix these things without having made this decision. Now, maybe one reason why we don't make the decision is because we've not yet concluded that the word is oh, yeah, that's the key. The that is it. Yeah. Or that it is powerful enough right. to fix our natural situation, which is not uncommon, especially when you first get born again. When you first get born again, you are feeling and emotionally dominated. Why? Because it took a long time for you to become the way you are. Right. When you got born again, your spirit got recreated. But your soul, your mind, your will and emotions did not get saved. So here I am, a brand new creature in my spirit with the same mind feelings, emotions, and willpower, essentially, or at least temporary. Stand right here, Jair. Stand right there for me. Now, I am a spirit. I have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and I live in a body. When I got born again, this part was totally recreated. In other words, this was not in existence until I got born again. Are you with me? Right. That's why it's so important to not skip over the new birth date and event. Some people try to go and start living Christian living and have not established this. I'm very proactive about asking people, hey, when they say you're saved, when did you get born again? What date? What happened? What were the events surrounding that day? And do you know that the average Christian or a good portion of Christians don't have that date? Yeah, that's true. They don't know when. Yeah. They just figured it was just a evolution process of becoming a Christian. No, it's an event. Not, it's an event. It's not a process. It happened at one time, one second, one moment. When was yours? If that hasn't happened, you know what that means? You're not born again. Which would least, at least give you a little bit of an understanding as to why this Christian life is so frustrating. Maybe you're trying to live something that you're not a part of yet. All you got to do is get born again. Change it just like that. How soon can you do it? Today, glory be to God. Right away, right now, get it? Now, this part was changed. Now, that old, that old soul, boy. <laughs> ooh, ooh, look at him. Boy. I'm telling you, that's something, ain't it? You got to watch that old soul now. That mind, will, and emotion. I'm telling you, even for kids. Kids, teenagers, preteens are supposed to be born again. Amen. And baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And live in the kingdom of God. Yeah. It's not a grown-up thing. It's an everybody thing. Yeah. Kids, if you don't get born again, if you die and you are at the age of accountability, meaning you know better, you can go to hell. Hell is real. Okay. Can't talk about that too much in a Christian church right now. Say it. The mind, will, and emotions did not get born again. So I'm born, I'm, I'm recreated here, but now I got this part of me that only knows everything 
that it used to do and is now projecting how it was programmed. This is why it's not uncommon once you got born again, you, before you got born again, you had the lust issue. It's not uncommon that now you're born again, you still feel the lust. Because you're not dead. You're alive. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. But what has to happen to this soul? He has to be reprogrammed. Now here's the key, and I'm going to move. Oh, Lord have mercy. The Whoa. pressure of time, Jesus. Whoa. Here's the issue. This part of me is not automatically reprogrammed. It will only be reprogrammed on purpose when a decision has been made to reprogram it. You can live your whole same life and this part of you never change until you make a decision to make the word of God first place. Yeah. Now here's the commitment. Chelsea and I came before the Lord and we did this. We took communion. We said, Lord, both of us, a man of God, I'm not just down there. Wife, you get down here too. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Why? I'm the priest of my home. We are one flesh. In this house, we are going to serve the Lord. This house is going to follow the direction that I as the priest set as a man in this household. Who is the direction concerning this household going to flow through? Me. As the man, who is the head of my house? My wife or me? I'm the head. Do I dominate? Am I supposed to dominate my wife? That's dangerous. Glory be to God. You ain't never seen trouble, man, until you get over into that. You can't do that. But I'm the head of my household. God's going to hold me responsible. Lord. We covet it together and make a decision this day that we won't change the word of God to fit our lifestyle. Now, how can that be done? My job, my home schedule, the organizations and groups that I'm a part of, my family time, don't really allow for me to prioritize God or church or the word. So, in actuality, Pastor Al, what you're asking me to do is unreasonable because my schedule, I don't have time to pray. I've got to get to work. I don't have time to be listening to the word. Now, you, you that just got saved, you need to spend more time listening to the word. You that have been saved need to spend time in the word. You need to open up the Bible. Actually open it up. You hear that? That is dreadful to the flesh, ain't it? You are not abnormal if your flesh would adhere to like, oh, God. You are not abnormal. Welcome to normalcy. Yeah. This is a labor that you will have for your entire life Absolutely. in the earth. Absolutely. The labor and responsibility to attend to the word. But you can make a decision. And Satan cannot stop you from making a decision. Isn't that good? That's great. Have you made a decision? Yeah. Yeah. Now that's easier said than done now. Yeah. 
before you get, you know, so word of faith. <laughs> Have you made the decision? If the Lord was there in your private life, when you're home and nobody's around, have you? Will it? Is it evident that you have made a decision that God and His Word is first priority in my life? People like that pray daily. People like that don't typically go three weeks without the Word. Two weeks without the Word. People like that don't miss church much. Now, I live in a body. This body is going to enact whatever influence is coming from my soul. This body is going to walk it out. Turn around. Turn around that way. This body is going to walk it out. Right here, I'm sorry. Yep, just like that. Apologize. This body is going to walk out what he thinks. What decisions have been made. How he feels. Particularly if what he feels has not been reprogrammed. You are not led by your feelings anymore in the kingdom. Just because you feel, have you ever felt like, man, I absolutely do not feel like getting in the word. Has anybody ever felt that? Do I have any honest people? Have you ever felt that way? Yes. Your feelings are a lie. Don't listen to it. If you go by that, will you ever feel like getting in the word? Yeah. Uh, working, out. Huh? <laughs> working out. Working out? Do you ever really feel like working out or do you always feel like working out? But wait a minute. What happens once you start working out? You feel like it becomes addictive. The word is the same way. You develop a hunger and a thirst for finding out how the kingdom works. Glory be to God. Now, this soul won't do it. This soul needs something that's more powerful than it. And it's the spirit. That's good. That's good. It's designed that the spirit influences the mind, will, and emotions, right. and then the body walks out, and the results Absolute. That's good. are good or bad based off of this scenario. Yep. How do you live? Those who walk after the spirit do what? Do what what's the scripture say? If you walk after the flesh, you will fulfill the desires of the flesh. Yep. If you walk after the spirit, you'll fulfill the desires of the spirit. Well, here's this crazy question around church forever. We hear it so much. How do you walk after the spirit? You make a decision, a quality decision, to make the word of God first place and final authority. Watch this. In every area of life. Now I'm guilty of times having made the word of God and a commitment to it in one area. But not in this area. Now this isn't everybody. Some of you have not even got to the one part yet. And it's okay. Keep growing. But there are some of you that have experienced this right now in this room, glory be to God. Where you know what it is to commit to one area and you celebrated that, glory be to God. Hallelujah, the word has worked. Hallelujah! <laughs> the word has worked for me, glory be to God! Yeah. And you'll tell that same testimony, you'll <laughs> hold on to it. 5,000 times, glory be to God. Let me tell you about what the Lord did. And it's good. You should hold on to it. It is foundational. But you got to move from the victory and the decision in that area. And now you got to do the same thing in this area. Amen. That's good. I love it. That's awesome. I've done it where sin is concerned. And guess what? It's true. Sin has no dominion over me. But in my marriage, not quite. In my finances, not quite. 
concerning the healing. I've done it with healing. My brother, before he went home to be with the Lord, he could receive healing always easier than I could. I had to press. I had to really get my mind renewed to the word. But for him in that area, it was nothing for him. Every area needs to be redefined by the word of God. This is the way. Now, Mary understood this. This is how she chose to live. Martha, have a seat, guys. Almost done here. You're not, you won't have me tomorrow, so you can fuss about how long I can't be in church just a minute. Long. We're almost out of here. Can you take five more minutes? Yes. Can I get five more? Yes. You sure about that? Yes. I told you to tell Brother Church to be quiet, see? <laughs> they gonna, they're going to tackle you after church. You Don't worry about, about it. it. <laughs> you can fight. So I can fight, right? <laughs> Is there air on it here? Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> now watch this. I must, I must just be under the anointing up here. And this uh, heavy jacket too. One of the combination of the two. Now watch this. Let me just show you this. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. That part is what? The decision. Now, verse 40. Go back up. Now, when that decision hasn't been made, here's what happens. But Martha was what? She was drawn. When that decision has not been made, here's what you're experiencing. You're drawn away. You're distracted. Mentally, you're, you're dealing with sort of like a depression right here. Don't even realize it. Right? Overoccupied. Too busy. When I first owned my first company, I would be out of the I would be out of the house by 5 a.m. when I was around 21 years old. 5 a.m. I owned a general contracting company where we specialize in painting. I'd be out of the house by like 5 a.m. every day, and I didn't get back till like midnight the next day or that night. Midnight every day was my schedule that way, and I wasn't getting anything accomplished. I was making this, which was good, when I should have been making this. I was over-occupied. I was too busy. I was pursuing, and I was working hard to do it, but I wasn't doing the right things that would translate to ultimate profitability. Bill Winston says, and correct me on how he says this, that you've got to be cautious not to mistake activity for progress. You could have activity, but you've got to see, am I progressing here? Overoccupied, too busy, full of care, worried, working a lot. The work is not getting done because of somebody else. I had to watch that one right there. Glory be to God. Somebody else's fault. Why wow, this thing ain't coming down like it's supposed to. Now, watch this. But much serving, uh, Martha was covered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left? What, what, what stance is that? What do you call that stance? What, what is she now? Unbelief. Is she the victor or is she the? She's, victim. she's victim now. Lord, this is when you start crying, Christian, right here. Uh, Lord, I just, it just hurts me so much. I'm just trying so hard, and it just, it just seems like I can't get ahead. And, and you start doing that to your kids, and you teach your kids how to be pitiful instead of powerful. That's right. That's right. You're teaching them not to make a decision. See, that's the thing about living by faith. You choose. You make the decision. Does it mean you don't ever feel anything? Come on, you ought to know better than that by now. Do you feel it? Absolutely. How much of it? 
every bit of it. <laughs> That's me. Every bit of it. Am I denying what I feel? Am I in denial about what I feel? What you said legitimately got on my nerves, made me upset, hurt my feelings. I'm not denying that, but I'm denying its ability to take control over me and dictate what I do and redefine who I am and affect my resolve. And I stop it by what? Saying something to it. Now, our feelings, I ain't going to feel that way. Now, have I successfully done that when I have been attacked in the emotional realm every time? No. But I don't make excuses if I don't. Just give me some time on myself. So I can go fix it. Yeah. You know, you should worry about my, you know what you worry about me. Now, let me deal with this, how I need to deal with it. No, how I need to deal with it is in the word. Stand up for me for a second. We're almost out of here. I want to point this out to you right here. When you are in the word, when you've made a decision, here's how you'll know you've made a decision in that area. You'll no longer be drawn away. You won't be distracted. You won't be mentally unfocused. You won't be too busy for the things of God. You won't be too busy to pray. You won't be too busy to come to church. You won't be full of care or you won't be anxious and worried. If you are anxious and worried, you have not made the decision yet. Okay. What you're doing is you're still, and I, have, is this, has my nice face been on or what? Yeah, this has it been on? Well, you have not yet actually decided that this is not your fault. <laughs> that the enemy is trying to put something on you that does not belong to you. The anxiousness and the worry are lies. In which case you're able to talk back to them and say, anxiousness, worry, I refuse you in the name of Jesus. I don't have that care. I'm not worried about anything. Glory be to God. I have a covenant with the Lord. My request has been made known. Glory be to God. Listen to this really quick. I had to stand so I can get about three minutes. Walk right into it, too. I love you. A good man, Matthew 12, 35, take this home and study it. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart. Good what of the heart? Good treasure. What does treasure mean? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't nobody say anything out loud. Don't nobody say anything out loud. Where's some of my, look at some of the newest people here. I always pick on Sister Jeannie. I can't pick on her again. I always pick on But she knows them. She got all the answers most of the time. Okay. Uh, Brother Luke, that word treasure, what would you say it means? A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Great. I love that. I love that answer. Sister Brienne, treasure. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Okay. 
Okay. Being stored. Interesting. Sister Lethia, give me a veteran in here. What is treasure? What do you think? What does it mean? A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Reserve? Like it? Who knows it? <laughs> Chelsea, what is it? I don't know. Oh, my. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. I got my notes out and ready to be right down. <laughs> well, church, what is it? Deposit. Deposit. Now, let me add, here's why I did that little exercise. In your thinking, what you concluded, and just in this case, it's not picking on anybody. How different is that from what you thought? You see? Now, knowing, see the Bible is written in the form of a mystery. The New Testament is. Literally, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. When I say it's written in the form of a mystery, it is coded. It is supernaturally coded. The natural mind cannot figure out the code. It has to be unlocked spiritually. But when you got born again, you were given the ability to unlock the code. But the way you unlock the code is by attending to that word. Putting it in front of your eyes and your ears. Spending time with it. And then you start connecting the dots. And every time you connect a dot, you unlock a secret that catapults you to the next level in living. Okay. Your next place of joy is unlocked in that mystery in the word. Your next financial increase is unlocked. Your next marital... Listen, I would, when Chelsea and I... Can I, can I say this? Oh, I gotta, can I say this? I got to be transparent. I got to say this. Listen, and you've heard me say this before. When I first got delivered, my spirit was recreated, right? But my flesh had been programmed... And the programming of my flesh said this, that I could not be content or satisfied by one person in an intimate relationship. Now, here I am, married, <laughs> fresh married and born, well, born again, and that is the state of my mind, will, emotions, and my physical body. And I'm married to a beautiful woman, had nothing to do with her. But here I am in this place, and I'm married. What am I gonna do? <laughs> what do I do? What do you do about a situation like that? I made a decision. I made a decision to believe what the word said about where I was. Versus how I felt. Because I legitimately felt that way. How did I get, how did I come to the conclusion of how I felt? How did I get that way? I was programmed. How did I get programmed? But how did I get programmed that way? Everything that I exposed this flesh suit to. All the things I watched. All the people that I was with and interacted with. It's how I got to that place. Now I've got to change the very real natural. But I can't change it naturally. I've got to change it supernaturally. Let's go. Here's how I did it. Jesus. Good work. By making a decision to deposit. Now this was posted in the group a couple days ago. The way you get the bad programmed stuff out is by putting the good stuff in. Put more in and it will push the bad out. Don't do the psychology way and go and start digging up into... I found out 
but I repressed the memory <laughs> that I was actually molested when I was four years old. Yes, it may be the case that you were molested. Do you know the average man sitting in church was molested as a kid? I was molested as a kid. Do you let that define your future? Absolutely not. I prove that you can move forward in the future forgetting those things that are behind you and it not having the power to affect where you are Amen. unless you get to trying to dig it up and give it power. I can only I got I got I got beatings with two by fours and my stepdad was a, a concrete guy and he was one of the best fighters in the city and he beat us with his fist and with two by fours and and uh, you know we were we were absolutely terrified of him and you know me and all of my brothers how long can I tell that story I can't I can't live there I deposited that may be here's what I deposited stuff in the word that says that may be what did happen to me, but that's not who I am, glory that's be to right. God. I am right. the very righteousness of God. Right. I am who he says I am. Right. I've forgotten those things that are behind me, and they don't have power to keep me from the good things that are in my present and in my future. So I would just right. go ahead with my good self and enjoy my present that's right. and expect good things in my future. Glory be to God. Oh, I grew up. I grew up in the hood. I grew up broke. You know, when I was a little kid, when I was a preteen, my sister, my stepsister, who was like my sister, blew her brains out. She literally blew her brains out. Remember that, Christian? Remember one time she blew her brains out, and that affected in the natural. That does something to you, man. It does something to you. Now, what psychology will tell you to do is to go throughout your whole life digging up and sitting with that thing, that memory. And all you're doing is redepositing the trauma of that situation over and over into your mind, will, and emotions. In your subconscious, and it's dictating what you're doing. It's sabotaging your life. And you don't know it because the devil has anointed a lot of those psychologists or psychiatrists, uh, not saying all of them, to keep you programmed that way. Right, absolutely. So you thought you needed counseling. All you needed was the word, glory be to God. Amen. Do you notice in this church we don't do a ton of counseling? You know why? That's intentional. You understand that, right? <laughs> it's because we teach you how to use the word. And the word will strip any excuses in that particular area of life. It's always, in case you were wondering, it always comes down to, did I decide to do the word? How did I get that out? How did I get all of those bad things out? Deposit. When my brother went home to be with the Lord, man, you heard the story, my best friend on the planet, you would be hard pressed to ever, ever find two people that were as close as me and my brother. The pain, I felt the pain. It was real, ladies and gentlemen. It was real, so real, that at times I would be driving in the car and the pain was so real that it would cause me to pass out while driving. Is that accurate? Not even knowing that that could even happen. Pass out while driving. And my wife would reach over and say, in the name of Jesus, sorrow, take your hands off of it. I'll come with a bloop, 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 bloop. Hey, babe. Thank you. That could have turned out bad right there. <laughs> Glory to God. But what did I do to heal? I kept depositing at the joy of the Lord is my strength. See, the word of God is more powerful than your trauma, glory be to God. It's more powerful than your pain. It's more powerful than what you have been through. 
When you begin to deposit what God says, yeah. you might have been insecure before, but you're not insecure now. Right. You hear that? Yes. You hear that? You might have been insecure before, but that's not who you are now. Right. You are who the Lord says you are. Right. I've forgotten those things that are behind me, and so should you. Glory that's be to right. God. That's right. It's no longer your testimony. Amen. God is building a new testimony Amen. in you. Hallelujah. You hear that? Yeah. God is perfecting a new testimony in you. Amen. That's going to be your ministry, not your testimony forever. Glory Ooh. be to God. Good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Glory Lord. be to God. Amen. Nancy I loved it. She said, I learned a long time ago that the way to get over the problems or to get something out of you that's ugly, that's bad, that's nasty is by putting the word of God inside of you. How? Deposit. Make a decision to deposit. How do you go from a gangster to a preacher? Deposit. You gangsters are privileged. You hear me? I wanted that to be heard online. You gangsters and you thugs you are privileged because the enemy saw the great potential in you and he sold you the lie of the streets and that lifestyle because he knew that the potential in you was greater than anything you could imagine. And he can't afford to allow you to get loose in the kingdom, glory be to God. He can't afford to allow you to get loose in the kingdom because he knows once you catch on to the fact that you are forgiven for much, you will be grateful for much, glory be to God, that you will believe God for the impossible. That's right. I'm telling you, the gangsters are supposed to be running the country. Glory be to God. That's right. The anointing and the call is on you. You can totally step out of. Right. Yeah. Listen, those of you that have come out of things that I've come out of, don't let what you came out of be your identity now. Right. Be bold enough. How? Deposit. That's right. Homosexuals. If you've been involved in homosexuality before, how do you literally take feminism or feminine attributes out of your thinking and out of your body? Deposit. Homosexuals can go from effeminate men to masculine men that any woman would be glad to be a part to be with. How? Through deposit. Same thing with the women. I don't care what you have been through. None of it is as powerful as the power of the word when you make a decision to deposit it in your situation. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Do you receive that? It's okay to clap. You know, we don't mind if you clap for this, sir. You know, it's okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So what are we going to do? We're going to fight this thing. We're going to fight that thing spiritually. Glory be to God. We're going to fight this thing by deposit from now on. We're not going to fight in the natural. We're not going to try to fix the finances because we can't. That's right. You know, the Lord reminded me of the day through my wife. Glory be to God. You know, she don't listen to the Lord tell your wife. But, <laughs> and the wife get on you. Don't always feel good. I admit, Chelsea, don't always feel good. <laughs> Sometimes I just need a minute. <laughs> But I'm getting better at this thing, man. Yeah. I'm getting better. Before, I could just be shut down. Like I can't, so shut down, I can't even move. <laughs> One of those. The Lord said, Al, you know, now that with the, my car situation, I actually have to spend the time looking for another car. And it's like, oh, I'll try this. Tried that, Lord of mercy. This didn't work. The numbers don't work out right here, yada, yada, yada. The Lord had to get it over to my wife. He says, basically, I'm paraphrasing, going to have to turn cast a care over to the Lord concerning this thing. Like, Lord, I got bigger battles, bigger fish. To, I got bigger giants to slay for the kingdom's sake than this car situation. Well, 
lay aside the sin and the weight that what? So easily besets you. Al, you need to get the word. How do I deal with the distress associated with it? Posit the word in that area. He said, Al, you are legitimately not depositing the word sufficiently in this area. How can that happen? I'm a preacher. Do you see? Yes. It can happen to any of us. That's good. Wow, I have gone on way too long. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, I know you're going to talk about me, but <laughs> I just got to quote this last, this last verse right here. These last few verses, a good man out of the good tree, I got to read this, a good man out of the good deposit of his heart, bringing forth good things. How does your heart bring forth good things? By deposit. An evil man out of the evil, what? Deposit. Evil. Twisted. Or guess what? Lack of deposit. Oh, wow. That's good. All right. And treasure also right here in the Greek is the place where the treasure is held. Okay. So, Sister Brienne, you were, you were there. But I say unto you, watch this, that every idle word that men shall speak, what it does deposit and speaking have to do with each other? Every idle word that men shall speak. That's what it is, my brother. Let's go down right here, my brother. This is what it is with you. You've got to speak. You've got to speak it. And I know you're speaking, but you've got to speak more. You got to start talking crazy. You got to start talking crazy. Lord, do, do, do I believe this? Is, do, is this accurate? You don't even have to tell me. I'm going to tell you. You've got to speak. You've got to speak the things that be not as though they were. The enemy fights you to try to keep you quiet. You got to speak. You were born to speak. Yeah. I'm sure you know that. You've got to speak, glory be to God. Speak to your situations. Anything, don't go introvert. Stay out. Don't, in, in your case, it's specific to your case, don't anybody else take it if it's not you. In your case, stay out, not in. Don't close. Don't clam. Stay out. Stay in the light. Talk in the light. Ooh, the Lord may have to reveal this to you while you're sleeping, but you're going to get it. Stay out. Sometimes when you've been through changes and hell in life, the enemy works overtime to get you to shut up. And question everything that you say, everything you feel. No, no, no. Speak. How do you speak? By depositing. You keep depositing, and the overflow of that deposit will begin to flow out of you. You speak to everything. Listen to, this, to me. Everything in your life, I don't care what it is, that is not as it should be or as you want it to be right now, the answer is to start speaking to it. Bill, be paid. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Talk to it like it can hear you. And I promise you, it'll change. Do you believe that? You've been pressing, glory be to God. You've been pressing. Did I get a word of the Lord about this brother the other night, the other day? Did I text somebody about this? I did, didn't I? The humility and the willingness to learn and grow is working in your favor. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Now just start saying. Amen. You got to walk out here talking crazy is what you got to do. Start saying. You receive that? Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words you will be condemned. 
It's not talking about heaven or hell. It's this life. It's in your situation. The outcome of your situation is connected to what you say. What you say is connected to your deposit. Deposit, say, results. That's how we're going to do this, AWOFC. We're all going to, we're all going to walk this path. Amen. We're going to walk this together, and we're going to get results. These cards are going to come off this floor, glory Amen. be to God. Right. And they, they ain't taking them up until you come and get them. Yeah. Deposit, say, and results. Kids, you can get the same way. Amen. You can get your, your pop bubble gum and chip money the same way. Amen. Deposit, say, and results. Dream, folks. But you got to have something to dream on. You can't just automatically dream. You got to deposit. Amen. Can we make a commitment? Are we ready to commit to Absolutely. that? We're about to go before the throne and we're going to make a commitment to this. Is anybody willing to make this commitment? Yeah, for sure. We're going to make this commitment to make the word of God final authority, first place. Now listen, as I pray this, when we get to the part of the confession, I'm telling you, I believe it's going to be binding. I believe it's going to be binding. I believe it's going to release some things in you that you otherwise wouldn't have had. Amen. It's going to release.